Hello everybody, Caventia here, and we're here finally at the Invictus launch week. Let's get into it. What's that peeking over the hill? Is it Polaris? It is Polaris. Look at that gigantic beastie there. Oh my god, I'm so excited for this ship. You can finally see the top of it. That's the hangar up there. That is a truly, truly beautiful ship. Just look at the length of it. It's kind of hard to tell from this view, but the Taurus only comes up to about half way and is, I, I don't know, a, a third of the length of it. It's the Polaris is absolutely gigantic. Sadly, it doesn't have an interior right now, hence it's got the blacked out glass on the front. But you can see that it harbors eight missiles on each side. Those are the smaller missiles. Not to be mistaken with the gigantic torpedoes that come out of these cross thatch sections below. Those are the torpedo tubes, which fire up to 28 size 10 torpedoes, which is absolutely insane. Moving further back, we've got some retro thrusters there to slow it down, along with some maneuvering thrusters on this kind of bulkhead that comes out the side. We have these little wings that extend out sideways. Two size 5 manned turrets. We can see that it's adorned with the new Polaris logo, the four-pointed star. Moving lower down on the starboard side, we can see that it has what appears to be a large door. My understanding is not only does the Polaris have the hangar on the top, but it also has space for ground vehicles on the side. Back on top now, we start to get the first views of the hangar. This hangar, I believe, might be big enough so that you can fit a vulture in there, which is what I'm kind of hoping, because I'd like to blow stuff up and then harvest up the wreckage. I think that'd be quite fun. These curious little pop-up things you can see on the top, they are referenced in the model as air brakes. So I'd imagine these wouldn't be up all the time, but they'd extend when you want to slow down in atmosphere. These armoured portions near the rear of the ship could be concealing docking collars. I think that's a likely candidate for this one, or potentially uh, extra turrets behind there. Although I'd have to check back at the model to, uh, to say with confidence. Behind the hangar on the stern of the ship, you have this little remote access rocket pod. Curiously, according to the roadmap, CIG recently finished work on PDS, or point defense systems for capital ships. I do wonder if this will be automated. I am absolutely enamored and obsessed with this ship, and I can't wait to actually have one of my own and do a full interior tour with you when it's released later this year. Now, out of all of the things here today, this is the vehicle that I think is going to make the single most fundamental change to how we play Star Citizen. To find out more, check out my video in the top corner. Long story short, you can now respawn on a whole load of new ships. This is a huge deal for bunker running. Of course, there's still the classic Ursa and the luxury Ursa Lynx which is a nice place to be, but this one here is a fundamental game changer. In this haul, you can also rent the Scorpius and the Scorpius Centaurus. The Scorpius is one of the best two-seater fighters and handles really well in master modes. And then Taurus is fine if you're a single player, but I think it has problems with the EMP in this version. The Aurora LN is a combat-focused Aurora, which is kind of funny to say out loud. And the Mantis is one of my favorite ships in the game. Yoink. Oh, it's designed for bounty hunting, interdicting, and uh, um, piracy. I also quite like the idea of using this as a mining platform, and you could have a prospector in there, and then if you get chased, you can always run back away to the uh, Polaris mothership. I'm sure you've probably had enough of me drooling over the Polaris for now. <laughs> the other four ships, slightly dwarfed in this hall, are the RSI Constellation series. Most of these have a lower and upper turret, with the exception of this one, which has a satellite dish up top. Three seats for the pilot and two co-pilots, a center elevator airlock, shower shitter combo, lockers and gun racks, a social area that's supposed to have a pop-out table that I've never actually seen working, four bunks, and a large enough cargo hangar to fit some of the largest vehicles in the game. Towards the back of the ship, they have component areas and access to a small snub fighter. The one with the rounded cockpit is the Aquila, and that's the exploration variant. The Taurus variant benefits from a significantly larger cargo area, 
The Andromeda is the more military focused version and has some additional bespoke missiles and better armament. The Constellation series is in a particularly good place right now, as they've just had a significant weapon size increase. Finally, my favourite version of the Constellation series, the rare Constellation Phoenix. They only sell this ship at limited times of the year, and it comes with the P-72 Archimedes instead of the P-52 Merlin. That's a slightly more combat effective snub fighter. And although the cargo bay and much of the front of the ship looks the same, the rest of the ship has quite a different flavour to it. They've tied the design in quite well, going from the hard-edged, white, slightly industrial front section of the ship to the clean and glossy luxury section of the ship, complete with multiple bedrooms with their own fish tanks, comfy business class chairs with a view, a meeting table, and even a bar. You may recognize this from the set of Star Citizen Live. Let's hide those unsightly components. Sadly, I can't undock this in the convention hall. Although this is mostly RSI day, there are a few other manufacturers here with some military ships. The Mustang Delta is the combat version of the Mustang. Origin have a small showing with their most combat focused ships, the 325A and the 125A. Both of these ships actually handle really well in master modes at the moment, and I'm looking forward to putting them through their paces. As well as that, this has a weapon size increase and has by far one of the best ballistic Gatlings in the game on it right now. The 125A has ladder access and a bathroom and a slightly more spacious interior, complete with small kitchenette and gun rack and wine rack. The 125A has a step-in, component access and space for two SCU boxes inside and a much more compact area, essentially with a bed and a pilot seat. But apparently this handles really well in master modes too, so I'm gonna have to give it a try. The final manufacturer here at the show is Argo. We have the SRV, which I've already reviewed. I'll stick a link to my SRV review in the top right hand corner for you. But today we also have another new kid on the block, and that's the Argo MPUV or MPUV, multi-purpose utility vehicle, 1T. And the T stands for tractor beam. It also has a little dinky tractor beam on the rear. I'm looking forward to making a review and playing around with this one. Let's have a quick look on the RSI website. And of course on the top we have the Ursa Medivac. Provides frontline medical support essential to any ground operation. Totally agree with that. Means that death and dismemberment are no longer synonymous with defeat. <laughs> that is some great writing there. And my beautiful Polaris, a nimble Corvette class capital ship. Of course, those aren't the only RSI ships for sale today. They've got the Apollo Medivac triage this one you used to have to do a specific game in order to be able to buy it so it's cool that you can now the aurora we saw of course all of the connies the lynx the mantis the perseus which is a yet unreleased frigate our wonderful polaris the scorps the ursas and the zeus and the only variant of the zeus that's available is the zeus mr as this is a interdicting bounty hunting ship this is another beautiful ship I'm looking forward to. But also the brand new MPUV tractor. And I'm really happy to see that they can fit a container on there while using the tractor beam on the back. That's kind of cool. So as well as the SRV, the MPUV cargo, the personnel version, the brand new MPUV tractor is available for $40. For those of you interested in seeing more about the Medivac, there's some more information here, including... They also have a really cool Medivac video. I love the way he's just groundhog daying his way to success. <laughs> that's quite funny. <laughs> and honestly, that's kind of how it works. I have a video on this already. I'll link it in the top corner. Go check it out because this is a really cool vehicle. And they're giving away a jacket with it for war bond pledges. So that's if you put new money in, at which point it will cost you $55. And there are a variety of paints for sale. But fortunately, you can also upgrade your ship to this. And I have a referral that I'm definitely going to be upgrading. Hop. 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 Thanks for watching, everybody. I hope you found this video useful. And to see some of my upcoming videos, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Goodbye, everybody.
I spent so long in the PTU uh, perving over this ship already. Another fun ship that you could have in the hangar is the Expanse. The Polaris could act as the defense or guard vehicle for a group of moles and prospectors mining, and then the refinery ship could actually fit safely inside this armored hangar. So when it needs to exchange materials with the moles and prospectors, it can do that in space, but then it can do the refining secure in the hangar. That is a truly beautiful ship right there.